good. We are good. Well, welcome everybody. And uh, we're going to take two here in Wagga. We're a little bit ahead of the game this morning, but we want to welcome you no matter where you are uh, joining us uh, here on Vision Sunday. Uh, our hope is that uh, you're discovering God's blessing, God's goodness, His kindness and His closeness, no matter what's going on in your world. And uh, we're really excited in uh, 2018 uh, to really just see, yep, uh, really just see God do incredible things. So we just want to uh, really, uh, I guess from the outset, really just launch what we just felt in our heart uh, that 2018 uh, was going to be about. But we'll do that in a moment or two. What we want to do now is uh, we want you to be able to hear from a lot of our uh, campus leaders or our church leaders. Uh, so you can put some names to, or so you can put some faces to names. And uh, no matter where you are, um, we just want to say hello again to uh, all those in Dubbo, Coffs Harbour and Forbes and uh, Kayama. They're, they've slept in this morning. So uh, they'll, uh, they'll hang out later today. Uh, but uh, we're just going to watch the screens and we're going to see and we'll hear from our uh, lead pastors. Hey church, it's Caleb and Renee from GC Bathurst with you today. We're really excited to see what God has planned for Bathurst this year and we're really believing that we'll be able to step into and own our own building that we can just claim for the kingdom of God. But we just don't, we don't want to have a building just for Sunday. We want to have a community centre where we can just bless and serve the people in our community and just show them the love and the grace of God. So why don't you just lean into that with us and pray over that with us. We're really believing that God has some great things planned this year for us. We're also really hoping to see faith rise, especially amongst our young adult uh, group within our church, and to see them live with a real conviction and a purpose of who Jesus is and who they're called to be in response to that that people would walk into their destiny, their personal destiny in God, and that we'd see a whole bunch of souls saved for the kingdom. The other thing that we're doing, there's a few of us that are spending our Monday mornings uh, in prayer and fasting for those people who work or serve in areas of uh, mental health and family and domestic violence. We've got a whole bunch of people across the life of our church that work in that space, right on the front line, bringing grace into what can sometimes be really difficult situations. And So we're going to be supporting them in prayer and believing that we can actually see a breakthrough in the mental health and the domestic and family violence situations in our town. We're looking forward to a great 2018. Lean in and let's see what God does. Hey, it's Lauren and Jono from Coba. We are so excited for 2018 and what God is going to do out here. This year we're going to start building relationships with the youth as a community. We're also going to have a focus on GC groups and getting people connected into them. Manspace this year will be changed up a little bit and have a focus on a few events and a few projects. Sisterhood is going to continue on this year with our coffee, cake and connection time, but we're also going to have a focus on spiritual growth. We also plan to partner on with our community events as well. So please keep Kobar in your prayers and your thoughts as we continue to connect our community to Christ. Hi GC family and especially everyone in Coffs, it's Darren and Shelley here. What an incredible 2017 for our campus. We definitely saw the goodness of God overflowing. To step into the promises of God in 2018, we are trusting Him for a hundred hundred vision. 100 adults attending regularly on a Sunday and 100% of people serving. We were so encouraged by a volunteer thank you dinner last year that we just want to make sure that this year no one misses out. Serving the life of GC Coffs is so much more than what happens on a Sunday morning and we're going to be taking a fresh approach to serving. As we serve each other within the church and continue to serve our community, we know that we will see God just strengthening those connections and His promises fulfilled. Also, we believe that 2018 is a year of building. Not just people and in influence, but in the literal as well. We've become increasingly aware that our building is not going to be our home in the long term. So we want you now to be seeking God, to be leaning in and just covering all our discussions with the RMS and future property in big faith-filled prayer. That's right. Let's believe in this year for the promises of God, the power of promise, and that the plans that God has for GC Coffs will come to pass. God bless. Hey church, welcome to Vision Sunday 2018. It's 
uh, such a pleasure to be with you this morning. We believe that uh, this year in 2018, we're going to continue to focus on our care and connection as a church and growing into that. We believe that we can continue to grow in caring for one another. Jesus tells us that the world will know his love by the way that we love each other in the church. And we're going to really focus in on GC groups and our ministry teams this year and the way that we care for one another. Also, we want to continue growing in our connection outside of the church, um, not just inside the church. So as a church, we're going to be working hard at getting into our community um, and making sure that we are showing the people around us and maybe outside the walls of the life of our church that we genuinely love them and care for them um, and that we want to connect with them on a personal level. And so that's going to happen through all sorts of different ways uh, with our uh, events as a church and the things that we organize, but also just through uh, strong biblical teaching that's going to encourage and empower us through the gospel to be Jesus' hands and feet um, and to, for us uh, to know um, how to present his gospel message to the world around us so that people would come and have a relationship with him. Well, church, we really look forward to 2018 and um, yeah, we hope that you would come on the journey with us and let's believe that 2018 we can see God do amazing things. Andrew and Michelle Hunt Forbes Campus. We'd like to share our vision with you today about what we believe the Lord has put on our hearts for the town of Forbes and beyond in the district. It's connecting the community to Christ. How do you do that? By modeling Jesus, by reaching out within the church, within the community and within the region, in all the avenues, in all the ways that the Lord places in us, opening doors to allow us to come into people's lives and to bring Jesus into their hearts. Our heart is to see Jesus, a bigger Jesus in everyone, that Jesus becomes so big to you and to those in the community that, uh, that we can fulfill his purpose and his calling on our lives, whatever that may be, in ministry, in the marketplace and beyond. Hey, Matt Rendell from our Narromine campus. Apologies for Linda, she wasn't able to be here today uh, during recording. Hey, we're really excited, you know, Vision Sunday, here we are, you know, one church in many locations. And so for all of the rooms, I hope you're excited about what God's doing and what the vision is and the goals that people are sharing as, as they talk uh, to you today. For us in Narromine, for anyone who knows our journey, last year was a massive year. And so this year, rather than pushing huge faith goals as such, we are more wanting to consolidate with, with vision goals. As Generosity Church Narromine, we want to continue to really strengthen the church itself. And so one of our goals is with our core team or our, our church life team to really build strength in that. To make sure we just really get a consensus across all our departments and making sure that, that we have a health and a, and a connectivity and just making sure that there's that, that one voice across the life of the church. So in the realm of kids, uh, women's, uh, men's, and even Sunday service. It's just that strengthening. Across the life of Generosity Church, I cannot tell you how strong it is, how important it is to be able to have those GC groups because everybody needs to fit somewhere. And those groups are really strong and they're really important because it helps people to really find that smaller place. As the church gets bigger, we've got to make sure that we stay in that, that relational smaller context. And so our groups is a big goal that we have for this year. Uh, all of those things, of course, are goals. It's going to take across the life of the church to make it happen. And as all of you know out there, everyone's got their part to play. So, so that is uh, us, that's Narromine. We're looking forward to it. And may every room in the life of the House of Generosity be blessed with their goals and with their forward focus this year. Good on you guys. Hi GC, it's Shannon and Elle from Parks Campus. And we're looking forward to a great 2018 this year. We're really believing that God's going to continue to grow us in heart and in influence and in numbers this year. And we want to continue to build off 2017 and the wins in that year. And one of those wins is our GC groups of which we had over seven new groups this year. And we believe that those groups are a vital part of being connected into Generosity Church. That's right. One of the other wins that we had was our sisterhood program launched, which saw over 15 new unsaved, unchurched women connected into our campus, being ministered to and loved on. We have been so blessed to have ever increasing favour in our community as we've really joined and partnered with community organisations to put on things like our town Christmas carols and our Elvis Gospel service, which saw thousands uh, hearing the gospel and it was televised nationwide. 
We just ask that you would continue to partner with us as we go into this great year and that you would pray for us as we uh, have continue to have our influence in the community, as we uh, acquire a building and as we reach out in the community to see souls saved. We can't wait to see what God might do through you and I as we just simply say yes to encountering him, to growing in him and to reaching our community for him. Would you partner with us and be praying and believing for a new building, for salvation in parks and for growth. Be blessed church. Hi, we're Phil Philip and Sue Brown, lead pastors of Port Macquarie and uh, 2017 was a year of transition for us but in 2018 we're just believing for a momentum to keep building. We're so excited to be a part of Generosity Church now. And this year we're really believing to just see people rise up in their gifting and their destiny, particularly young people. We want to focus on young people but and, and married couples, but not neglecting the seniors, of course. And our heart is that along the journey, we celebrate the wins and we just enjoy life, the abundant life that Jesus has promised. Yes, we're looking forward to building and strengthening relationships and, and being empowered by the Word of God through our GC groups this year. Church 2018 is shaping up to be an incredible year in the life of our church. We are expecting that God is going to do something incredible. There are so many amazing opportunities that we can really get into this year and, and um, you know, God is ready to do something incredible. We are, we're not going to hold back, we're not going to hide away church, we are ready to see what God's going to do. We have a message of hope and we're going to bring that message to our town and um, yeah, let's be ready to, to get a hold of that. You know, tomorrow is a vibrant and growing uh, community and um, with a hope for the future and you can just ask any tomorrow and we are just so proud of our town and, and, and we believe the incredible anointing that God has on this place. Um, and because of that, we really believe that God has given us the keys to um, advancing His kingdom in this place. And so we, we just want to be a part of that, however that can look. And there's lots of different ways we can partner and strengthen our partnerships um, with, with organizations we already have and, and parts of the community to see the name of Jesus lifted high. You know what? God has great big dreams for Tamora and He loves Tamora without limit. And we love tomorrow too. Happy Vision Day. Well, we moved to Wagga over 12 months ago now, and we've just been uh, so excited for what God's doing in the life of our church here in Wagga. We've had quite a few people um, settle into our church, and for 2018, we're really looking forward to just growing together as a family and seeing more and more that people are beginning to lock in as part of the greater GC family. And part of our vision is that each of us individually would just have this uh, sense of God-given responsibility to reach our friends for Jesus, to reach our workmates, our schoolmates for Jesus, that we would actually just, not only just as a church together, but individually, we just have this burden uh, for people who are far from God, you know, in Wagga and certainly in the Riverina region. Yep, just to really affect our community. So have a great year from us here in Wagga. God bless you. world and in our life. Uh, in a few moments, so both Libby and I will share a bit more around that. But just, a, I guess, a bit of uh, updating and some news that's happening in the life of our church for, for those who might be new to our church or maybe even unfamiliar uh, with our church. Uh, we've had a couple of changes um, and uh, some of it is to, or actually a lot of it is to uh, work with some of the growth that we've experienced as a, as a church. And the first one is that uh, at the start of last year, we put on uh, Caleb Dwyer, and uh, Caleb and Renee are the uh, lead pastors at our Bathurst campus. So we put on 
as a church, uh, Pastor Caleb as our executive pastor across the life of our church. And uh, he's doing a great job and I just want to honour him and thank him and uh, Renee for releasing him as well and uh, Mia and Eliza and uh, Matilda as well for releasing him. But he's just uh, done a a great job, uh, certainly behind the scenes in that role and uh, we've just seen that being a very, very uh, powerful thing in the life of our church. Uh, For those who don't know, so Caleb, if you see him every now and again, uh, he'll be our executive pastor. He's happy with Caleb. You don't have to call him pastor, executive pastor Caleb. He is happy with Caleb. And uh, so that's been really good. We've had a bit of a change up uh, in a good way uh, on our, as a church board. And uh, for those who uh, may know names and faces, uh, uh, myself, I sit on the board, uh, Shane Taylor, uh, Carol Smith, Greg Wright and Matt Rendell uh, sit on our board. So they uh, help uh, guide and steer our church, certainly in financial and property matters. But it just gives you a bit of an idea. Uh, and then uh, obviously being part of the ACC uh, denomination or movement that uh, gives us as a church a greater level of covering as well. So uh, go for it. So this year, uh, for those of you who uh, might be new to our church, each uh, Tuesday night we have what's called Team Tuesdays. And it's been been a really great opportunity to just actually uh, reinforce culture, who we are as a church, actually get some jobs done that we need to get done but also just to grow as a family as well and just to really get to know each other a little bit more also Um, but this year this will be the third year that we've run with Team Tuesdays but we're changing it up just slightly this year and we're actually going to run Team Tuesdays every second week Um, they were a little bit hit and miss last year and the year before they were every Tuesday so we're trialling to get what is our best fit. So this year, where it's every second Tuesday, we're doing Team Tuesdays. And there'll be different teams that meet on those Tuesdays. And we've got a fairly regular layout of how that can look for each term. But that actually just gives us time on the alternate fortnight to make sure that we're actually really getting involved in a GC group. Now, GC groups are actually so important to the life of our church. You know, it's where we can actually find that deeper connection. And as we grow, as we get bigger, we actually just need to make sure that each and every one of us are caring for each other. You know, pastoral care is is not something that just a set few do. It's actually, caring is actually something that we all do for each other. We're in the body of Christ, we're in the family, and we actually all need to have each other's back. And GC groups are a really great way of being involved in that. So make sure, if you're not already a part of one, that you get, that you join one. The other thing that's happening on the alternate fortnight, and some groups are coming along to this, um, individuals are coming along, is we've got the Abiding Life uh, Discipleship Training Course. And for most campuses, it's starting this coming Tuesday night, and we'll actually be running that fortnightly. So Abiding Life is actually something that Dr Ray Andrews, it's the the message of Abiding Life is something that Dr Ray Andrews has put together. But we're actually looking at that over 10 sessions, over 10 fortnights, so it'll go all the way through terms one and two. Now, if you'd like to come along to that, please make sure that you have a chat to your lead pastor and, um, but come along, you actually will need to do the whole thing because, you know, I actually, it's really on my heart to see people grow healthy to see people grow healthy. And sometimes, you know, when we accept Jesus, it actually is, we we try to renew our mind and just add him in on top of all of our baggage. But it's actually getting to the crux of emptying out the baggage that we've maybe gathered and accumulated through our whole life. Empty that out to actually have a full, clean slate ready for God to totally fill. So that's the whole message about abiding life. I warn you, we do get to some of the nitty gritty stuff you don't have to share it in front of everyone but you will get to some of that nitty-gritty so it's not something to be taken lightly have a chat to your lead pastors but that's what's happening on tuesday nights over the next um over over this year and the other thing is or another thing is that uh, a few of our church locations are really seeking god uh, about new properties new venues uh, new buildings that sort of thing so as a church could we be prayerful about that and around that as well and uh, just while we're on that, would you, you know, now that you've seen some of the faces to, to the names, would you be prayerful around the lead pastors and the leadership team for our church? You know, um, pastoring is uh, not, not so, it's sometimes a, a really enjoyable role or 
uh, calling, but sometimes it has its unique challenges. And I think if we can just uh, flood, flood each room with prayer, I just think uh, that we can see God move. So let's, let's also be prayerful about uh, you know, different locations. Uh, I know Parks, they talked about it, certainly Bathurst as well. Uh, they're close to uh, looking at something also. Uh, you know, as far as church buildings are concerned, let's just be prayerful as a church uh, around that as well. This year also, we're looking to launch our second GC campus in Nepal. Very exciting, very exciting. And I know um, Brad from here in Wagga and Ron from Narramine and Ben are actually going this week over to Nepal. We're going to be looking into where a few of those places are. Do, they're doing some leadership training, that sort of thing. There's also a missions trip in April. So if you're interested in that, make sure that you see your THP advocates. Uh, as you've seen the conference clip for this year, that's coming up in October, so make sure that you lock those dates in. We are very, very blessed to have Gary Cassie joining us for this year's conference, and it's one not to be missed. Please don't miss out. Okay, often when we get guest speakers in, people go, oh, I don't really know what they're like, so they won't buy it. I'm telling you now, he is awesome. So you need to make sure that you set aside the times. You will be super blessed. All right, so uh, as you may be aware, we've got to, uh, our church is in 10 locations and uh, this year we're really hoping to really launch into another three uh, in Kayama, Boambi and Orange. We turn to someone and say Orange. Orange. All right, so we're going to watch a clip which just gives you a bit of a, uh, a heads up as far as those three locations for this year are concerned. Hi, we're Andrew and Ange from GC Boambi and this year we are so excited to be launching our new campus here on the beautiful Coast Coast. First of all, we're so thankful for the incredible people that God is building around this, this plant. We're looking forward to this year, to building to this team as we each grow individually, as we grow as a church, as we grow in GC groups. We're also really looking forward to continue our relationships with our community, just loving on them and we're supporting them with a couple of key events this year. Our heart is to really reach those in the community who are broken and hurt and lost and downtrodden and abused. Our hope for this year is that we'll be able to reach these people and connect them with the love of Christ and the purpose and plan that He has for their life. We are believing for this year that this year will be a year of salvation. We're also believing for other people with the same heart and the same passion for our community to join us on this journey. One of my favourite spots in all of Orange is at 1400 metres on top of Mount Canobolis and I love to stand there and just look over the land and the people. And we're just believing that for 2018 that this is going to be a year where the Spirit of God will stir people's hearts and lives and that the, the soil will be turned and be ready for sowing. So we're just so excited to see what God is going to do in the city of Orange in 2018. Yeah, we are so passionate about the city that God has actually called Lee and I and our family to and he is gathering an incredible team to make a huge difference in the lives of people here in this beautiful city. So we are just so privileged to be part of the, on the journey really with Ben and Libby and the team at GC and we're just praying for all of you and knowing that 2018 is going to be absolutely a cracker of a year. God bless. Amen. Hi Church, it's Nathan and Mel from GC Kayama. As most of you know, we moved to Kayama halfway through last year, 2017. And since then we have seen God already starting to do amazing things. We have begun doing weekly Sunday hangouts with some of the crew in Kayama, as well as Tuesday nights with our launch team. We are so excited for what God is going to do in 2018. God has already brought in amazing people that are so passionate and expectant for what He is going to do and what God is going to breathe on Kayama in 2018. So 2018 is going to be a huge year in the life of our church here in Kayama. It's the year that we're going to launch. So we're excited to announce on the 8th of April on a Sunday, we're going to launch our first Sunday service, our regular weekly services here at 
in Kiama. We're putting a stake in the ground for our region, a stake in the ground for Kiama. And we're believing that we're just going to see lives transformed and changed as we begin to just really take ground for his kingdom here in Kiama. During the year, we also plan to uh, launch out connect groups. We, our heart is that we would see connect groups up and down the south coast. Connect groups that reach people, that love on people, that grow people. Our heart is to grow big people in this region. And we believe that 2018 is going to be a year of just growing big people seeing lives transformed and seeing the gospel go into places and into lives where it hasn't been before. So we'd love in 2018 as we launch out our launching year, if you could pray with us, if you could, could those who can participate, anyone who lives in Kiama or in this region, our heart is that you would join us in such a time as this to plant a, a life-giving church in this region. We'd also love for those who can provide. We're believing to raise $30,000 to go towards launching this church from strength. But for those who have on their heart to, to uh, provide or to give finance or to step out in faith, our heart is that, that we would see people come on board with us and just see a strong church launch yeah. in 2018. Yeah. Excellent. So it would be remiss of me not to mention, I have to mention a big happy birthday to my Nan, who is 91 today and loved by so many in so many of our campuses and also to Olivia Mitchell. Happy birthday. So lots of birthdays happening around at the moment. So yes, our theme for the year is the power of promise. And the verse that we've actually chosen to run with this year is 2 Peter 1, verse 4 out of the Passion Translation. It says, He has given you magnificent promises that are beyond all price so that through the power of these tremendous promises you can experience partnership with the divine nature. How beautiful. Partnership with the divine nature. You know, I do believe that God's actually taken us on a journey and brought us along the journey over the last few years and that actually that journey hasn't finished yet. You know, we had a couple of years ago, we had a, a year of Thanksgiving and we learnt through that that Thanksgiving precedes the blessing. Thanksgiving actually precedes all this. It's the framework, the structure behind it all. And, you know, I was looking at it and when the Israelites were crossing into their promises or their promised land, what actually stopped them from crossing into their promised land? What, what held them out for a, so many more years than they needed to was actually discontentment. So if discontentment stops us coming out, then actually Thanksgiving's got to be the key. Thanksgiving's got to underpin it all. It's the structure. So in order for us to step into our promised land, what's our confession? What's our confession? Is it thanksgiving or is it whinging and discontent? You know, thanksgiving, we learn, precedes the blessing. Thanksgiving comes before the miracle. Thanksgiving underpins it all. Then last year, we had the flourishing of that, the building on that, which was living in the overflow. And God was teaching us about living by kingdom principles. But, you know, some of us maybe didn't really see that all come to fruition like we had thought. But the verse that we used said, even the hard pathways overflow with abundance. So even though in this year just gone there may have been some hard pathways... God has still promised that they will overflow with abundance. And I believe God hasn't finished with our journey of learning to live by his kingdom principles. In 2 Peter 1.4, that verse we just read, it talks about the power of his promises. We, you and I can all actually experience partnership with the divine nature. We can participate in the divine nature. We can live in his kingdom, in his kingdom principles. He has promised. He has given you magnificent promises. Not just 
a ho-hum promise, magnificent promises that are beyond all price so that through the power of these tremendous promises you can experience partnership with the divine nature. I believe that's talking about his kingdom, the divine nature. You know, when we first let our team know of this theme for the year, Belle Boland from our Parks campus actually sent me this email and I want to read it to you. She said, I was leading worship in Narromine and the Lord really pressed upon my heart about declaring the promises of God over your life and that there had been those who were, look, who were holding on to promises that God had given them but were yet to see them fulfilled almost like they were waiting to see the overflow worked out in their lives and peace in believing, oh sorry, overflow in their lives in certain areas. The scripture he gave me was Romans 15, 13. Let's read that together. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing through the experience of your faith that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you will abound in hope and overflow with confidence in his promises. I spoke this over them and encouraged them to hold on to his promises, that his promises are yes and amen and to begin declaring them over their lives again. So what are you declaring this year as we step in? What's your confession and what's your declaration? You know, declaring the promises that he has given us, are we declaring that or are we declaring our own ideas and our own ways and our own thoughts? What are we actually declaring? You know, are we declaring that we can get the job done or are we declaring that he is able? You know, it says in that verse that by the power of the Holy Spirit, not by the power of Libby or by the power of you, but by the power of the Holy Spirit, you will abound. You know, when we're thinking, when we got thinking about everything with the power of promise, there's lots of different things that actually can symbolise promise. You know, you've got the symbol of a ring, you know, that promise of a ring, the promise to stay faithful to that person. There's a badge or a seal signifying that it's done. It is finished, approval. But you know what? One of my favourite symbols of promise is actually a seed. And the more I've thought about it, you know, it's the seed that holds the potential. All the promise is in a seed. It's the seed that holds the power. It's actually the seed, the promise that holds the power. It's, you know, when we plant a seed, what are we looking at? Or focusing on. You know, it did have some green shoots, green leaves, but the hot weather's kind of killed them off. But I had this seed that actually passed to Aaron Backman when he was here for conference. He'd given out some seeds. He was talking about promise. It was quite amazing when I went back and looked at his notes. But he gave us a seed and Ethan was all excited with me and we planted this seed. It's a bean seed. So we've got this bean growing. But, you know, when we actually are growing a seed, when we're cultivating and caring and nurturing a little seed, what is it that we're focusing on? We're looking for a little shoot, right? We're waiting to see the little shoot. We're waiting to see the green leaves that were there. There's some growing back. But you know what? We don't actually spend the time looking at the watering can, do we? We actually don't look at the watering can. We look for the shoot. We look for the seed. But so often, we actually focus on the provision rather than the promise. And this was a really big revelation to me that we often look at the provision rather than the promise. So we'll ask you today, what's your focus? So we've had what's your confession, what's your declaration and what's your focus as we step into the power of promise this year. You know, those three things might all sound very similar. 
However, I believe that our confession is actually preparing the ground. I believe that our declaration is speaking life into steering and stirring our faith. And I believe that our focus, it just actually is something we just do. It's what comes naturally, really. Sometimes we actually need to adjust our focus, but it's where we automatically look. And if we've put our confession and our declaration in place, then our focus will follow suit to that. You know, he wants us to just live in his kingdom day by day, naturally. He wants it to actually come naturally. We can do some things to put that in place. So that it comes naturally in our lives. What's your confession? What's your declaration? And what's your focus? Are we going to be giving thanks? Or are we going to be whining? Are we going to be declaring the the promises of God? And maybe some promises that you've maybe thought have died. Maybe there's some promises that God had given you. That you actually just feel disheartened. That they haven't come to pass yet. But we need to keep declaring those promises over our lives. We need to actually keep declaring that. And then our focus. Let's not focus on the provision or the surroundings around, but let's focus on the seed. Let's focus on the promise and the potential that is in that seed, the potential that is in that promise because it is a God-given promise. You know, He has given you. He has given you, not promises that, that are, are man-given because they can be hollow. We all know man can fail. But he, the God who never fails, the God who is greater than all, he has given you magnificent promises that are beyond all price so that through the power of these tremendous promises, you can experience, tangibly experience Not just be a bystander watching, but experience it for yourself. Partnership with the divine nature. Amen? Amen. The power of promise. What would our lives look like if we discovered the power of promise? What would your life look like? What would our family life look like if we discovered the power of promise? I mean, really... Uh, I love what it says in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 12. It says, we do not want you to become lazy. We turn to someone and say, don't be lazy. <laughs> it feels good, doesn't it? But to imitate those who th- through faith and patience inherit what has been promised. We do not want you to become lazy, but to imitate those who through faith and patience inherit what has been promised. You see, faith and patience is not being inactive or uh, static or uh, just having a fatalistic approach. I think sometimes we can just, I'm just waiting on the Lord. Oh, well, that's good, but sometimes it involves faith and patience and uh, even maybe a bit of hard work and sweat. But the truth is we don't, we don't actually need to coerce or manipulate God into seeing His promises fulfilled in our life. Uh, one of the, one of the, most challenging things we face in our world today is what's happening in the Middle East. And uh, if you trace it back, it actually happened because it's it's actually, we can trace it back to the fact of when uh, someone decided that they heard a promise of God and they decided that they would help God uh, fulfill that promise. And it's a man named Abraham. So he and Sarah, uh, they uh, had a promise from God and God said, I'm going to give you, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to, uh, you're going to have a huge family. The nations are going to be blessed because of you. You're going to have uh, innumerable descendants. And so God had put that promise in their heart. And then uh, some way and somehow along the way, Abraham and Sarah decided they would help God fulfill that promise. And uh, Sarah, and it was um, part of their custom, Sarah would say to Abraham, well, why don't you uh, sleep with Hagar? And uh, the, the promise, God's a little bit slow. Uh, we know he's promised, we know he's uh, he said he's going to do this, but we're going to help God. And, uh, you know, she's part of our family sort of thing. And, uh, and then as the, uh, the Bible tells us that uh, Ishmael was born and uh, uh, he, he sort of represents the son of human effort. 
of trying to make God's promises happen and uh, I'm going to make it happen um, the way that I want it to happen. I'm, a, I'm not, you know, they were impatient and I think it probably would say of us as well that, you know, we have times when we're impatient and maybe we try and force things, even if it's a God deposit or it's a, it's a, it's a promise out of the Word of God. And uh, here we see that, uh, and we're experiencing that mess now. Because someone decided, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm guessing that if most of us were there, that we may have done something similar. That uh, okay, God, you're a little bit slow here. Uh, I'm going to help you out, God. I'm going to move in, and because I'm believing for this promise. And uh, but but the great thing is that Isaac, who who came along, who was Abraham and Sarah's son, is known as the son of promise, or the son of the Spirit. Uh, in uh, in some versions we read, and. What he did is he made a way for the coming of the Messiah. So here we have this one son, Ishmael, who even still received a bit of a blessing, his family line from God, but he was a son born out of human effort. And they were believing in a promise, but they thought, okay, God, I'm going to make it happen this way because you promised and you said, and I'm going to, I'm going to manipulate, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, do something here because you need a bit of help, God, you're too slow. Uh, I'm not sure it's going to happen. I'm not sure how it's going to work out. So Ishmael is really the son of human effort, whereas Isaac represents the son of the Spirit, or where God's promises just come in uh, with no striving. You know, I love what it says in Romans 4.13, It was not through the law that Abraham and his offspring received the promise that it would be heir of the world, but through the righteousness that comes by faith. Every single promise we receive from God comes through this doorway called faith. Almost every single promise we want to see in God realised or activated through human effort produces failure. But if we're prepared to have faith and patience, uh, we might just see, I think that's part of really uh, living in the reality of the power of promise, that we would, by faith and patience, inherit the promises of God. You know, what would our lives look like, I really if we were to activate the power of promise. You know, maybe you're sitting on a promise. Maybe God just promised you something or maybe there's a promise in the Word of God, you know, that you've been sitting on or holding for some time and you just haven't seen that come to fruition. That maybe you just, God, is it this year? Is it this week? Is it, is it this decade, Lord? Maybe you've been praying for someone who is a family member who's uh, fallen from faith, has stepped out of faith with God and you're just, Lord, I'm just believing. Well, how about we just declare 2018 that it would be the year of the power of promise. That whether it's that person who's fallen out of faith or whether it's another area or maybe there's some relationship challenges or struggles and then you're just believing for the promises of God. You know what? God doesn't need help in that space. What God is looking for us is that we would have faith in Him and patience with Him. Uh, if He's sovereign and controlling over it all, well then, uh, uh, and we align our life to that, I just think that we can really live in that reality of the power of promise. So I don't know what promise you're sitting on, what you're waiting on, on how for God to move. Uh, but uh, I love what it says in Romans 4 verse 16. It says, therefore, <coughs> pardon me, the promise comes by faith <coughs> so that it may be grace and by guarantee to all Abraham's offspring. Not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of faith of Abraham. He is the father of us all. You see, I believe that if we're going to see the promises of God activated in our life, we have to identify with Abraham's faith, not his biology. We've got to identify he's the father of faith, the Bible tells us. And he sort of sets, even with his flaws and mistakes, even with his trying to help God, that we need to identify, okay, uh, Abraham is the father of faith. It doesn't mean we pray to Abraham or we knew we have a statue or an idol of Abraham. But it's okay, Abraham lived in such a way that he's regarded as the father of faith. And we see his promises, not necessarily in his lifetime, but we know now that uh, when it talks about the descendants and uh, you know, a blessing to the nations, that through his uh, lineage came Jesus Christ, the Messiah, that he saw... Uh, you know, amazing change and amazing transformation. Why? Because he lived in faith and patience. You know, it even says in another place that he did not waver through unbelief. That even when the promise never seemed like being fulfilled, that he didn't waver through unbelief. That he never stopped trusting in God. 
that he never stopped believing in God, that he never stopped leaning into the promise of God, that God, you promised me this thing, so I'm going to hold on. And when it gets tough and when it gets difficult, when I don't see you coming through, I'm actually just going to hold on tighter. Because the promise comes by faith. Galatians 3.29 says, If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. If you belong to Christ, <coughs> see there's a strong connection. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed. So you're part of God's family and heirs according to the promise. Now, most heirs want to receive something. Oh, thank you. <clears throat> most heirs want to receive something, don't they? They, you know, I when my parents go home to be with the Lord, my expectation is that they're going to give me stuff. <laughs> If they don't spend it all first, if my dad stops buying cars, I might have something. But an heir, but, but I don't recognise my, if I have an heir, if I don't realise that I belong to this family. That there's actually some, that I actually have some responsibilities as being a part of this family. But I actually have some authority. That, uh, you know, I know if I'm stuck, you know, I can ring my mum and dad and say, look, can you hit me for, you know... $25,000, you know I'm good for it and we'll see what happens. <coughs> but there's some, there's some responsibility and authority uh, when you know whose son and daughter you are. So if you know whose son and daughter you are today, whether it's healing, whether it's financial breakthrough, uh, whether it's someone who's far from God who you're praying back into faith, whatever it is, our encouragement is that this year we, that we would find, discover the power of promise. God's Word is packed full of promises. Some scholars say there's over 7,800 promises. Now, some are just specific to that time and place and what was going on there. But uh, surely for all of us here today, that there will be some promises of God that we can just hold on to and lean into uh, because we're looking for God to move. We're hungry for God to move. You know, Galatians 3, 14 says, He redeemed us in order that the blessing given to Abraham might come to the Gentiles through Christ Jesus. So that by faith, there it is again, that by faith we might receive the promise of the Spirit. Uh, you know what? The promise of the Spirit is the one thing that Jesus came to bring. And uh, He says to His disciples, you know, I've come and I've got to leave, but it's actually better for you to leave because the promise of the Father, who is the Holy Spirit, will come. What would our lives look like if we activated and lived in the power of the Spirit? If the promises of God, if the power of promise is really becomes true in our life, I think we have to really lean into what the Spirit wants to do in our hearts and in our world and in our life because He is the, like, he is the promise. The promise of the Father is the Holy Spirit. So as we consider uh, living into the, and leaning into the power of promise, what would it look like for all of us if we just heard from the Spirit of God in such a way that uh, you know, something was activated in us and He would lead us and that, uh, you know, the power of promise, whether it was for healing or maybe a breakthrough in our business or a relationship, whatever it might be, that the power of promise would be our testimony of 2018. In 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20, it says, For no matter how many promises God has made, and as I said, some have said there's over 7,800. For no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ and so through him, the am, the am, the amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. So there's a taps back into that partnership with God. You know, uh, in Second Peter, it talks about we we are partners in that divine nature. Well, part of our partnership in that, I believe, it, part of God's part is that uh, His promises are yes in Christ. So the Jesus part, the divine part, is made possible through Christ. Uh, but the amen part is our part of the partnership. The amen part is, yes, Lord, I'm believing you for that healing. Lord, I am believing you for that breakthrough. Lord, I'm believing for my friend to come to you. I'm believing for my family member to receive you as their saviour. Uh, Lord, uh, uh, you know, it says in Second Peter uh, that uh, God is not willing that any would perish, but that all would come to eternal life in Christ Jesus. That, that is, in fact, a promise. That, that's, that's God's will for everybody, I believe. And so the amen part of us is that we would agree and pray into that. 
Uh, but the yes part is uh, uh, that Christ would, uh, that God wants to see people come to Him. And our part is that we would believe that. So no matter if you're praying for someone, I just feel really stirred today, that maybe you're praying for someone and you have been for many, many years. Keep praying, believe in the power of promise uh, that people would come back to Jesus. You know, and as I finish and as the band comes, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 4, out of the Passion Version. He has given you magnificent promises that are beyond all price. <laughs> so that through the power of these tremendous promises, you can experience partnership with the divine nature. I wonder this year what promises you could hold on to. What promises of God God just wants to touch your life with? What promises of God God just wants to speak into? God wants for us to lean into. No matter where you are today, you know, our hope is that you'll discover the power of promise. The power promise. There's actual power, like a seed. There's potential. You know, a forest begins with the planting of one seed. So no matter where you are, would you just stand? I just want to pray for us as a church. (coughs) You know, a great place to start in discovering maybe a promise (coughs) is the Word of God. So as a church, can I encourage you to really, you know, Open the Word, discover the Word, find a promise that you believe God just wants to put on your heart and just lean into that, pray into that, speak over that. Whatever that promise might be, the Word of God is packed full of promises that worked back when it was written and work now. And we can see them activated in our life. It's not a blab and grab gospel, but it's a declaration. It's about being focused. It's about recognising that through Christ Jesus, God fulfills His Word by the power of His Spirit. Can you say Amen? Let's just pray. Heavenly Father, (coughs) we just thank You that You are good. Father, You are kind and You are close. Lord, we just declare, Lord, as a church, that this year would be the power of promise. Lord, that uh, You would meet us at our point of need. Lord, I just pray for people who have been holding promises for many, many years. Lord, that truly this year, Lord, and that 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 would be their prophetic sense would become a reality. Lord, that this year would be the power of promise, Lord, in areas of healing, relationship, finance. Lord, whatever it might be. Lord, we just ask, Lord, we declare that this year would be a year where we would see in the life of one another and in the church and in our communities, our towns and our cities, that this is the power of promise. This year we would see your promises fulfilled. Many would come to you, Jesus. Lives would be transformed and changed by the power of your Word. Holy Spirit, we just ask that you would uh, breathe in us in such a way that this year would be the power of promise. We recognise you as the promise of the Father. You're a comforter, you're an advocate. Holy Spirit, we just ask that you would come in a fresh and a dynamic way that we would discover what it is to live in the power of promise. In Jesus' name, amen. Can we give the Lord a clap offering? (laughs) All those on live stream, God bless you. And uh, enjoy the rest of your day, whatever that might look like. In Jesus' name, amen.